sorry for anyone that's been hurt through this. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. You know when you watch a specific YouTuber, you may follow all their social media, you may buy their completely ridiculous overpriced merch. You may even go to their meet and greets. You will bow down and kiss their shoes. They're basically God to you in a way. But one day that YouTuber comes under fire for doing something wrong. They're getting a lot of backlash now. They're getting death threats, they're getting mean tweets, everything. So you're probably thinking, you know, it's, it's, it's time to make an apology video or something along the lines. You see, when you make an apology video, it's your job as a YouTuber to not beat around the bush or blame murderers for for uh, for killing someone you know it's like the person that I just killed uh, he just walked directly into my knife he didn't really like I didn't stab him I wasn't like duh, 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 but he just like walked I think he was like blind or something so I'm really not being held accountable for this so it's technically not my fault that that I killed him so it's <sighs> Like, how could I possibly take responsibility for my own actions? Like, the thought of that just makes me absolutely sick to my stomach. Say you're sorry and own it. But for some people, they just, they just cannot do that, uh, can they? It's almost like they're having a conversation with their own ego. It's like, I can make an apology video, but I'll put three mid-roll ads and tell everyone how much of an amazing person I am. F fuck. So not only people will fall for the apology, her audience as well. So while she's apologising, she's just milking that cash cow just to, just a little bit more, just trying to scrape every single dime from this apology like it's like it's genuine. So there's a YouTuber that goes by the name of Laura Lee. I've I've never watched her videos. Uh, I've never really been interested in in videos like my cat picks up my makeup. Pick their makeup and then I was like, oh my god, I'm such a genius. I'll let my cats pick my makeup. But before I have a good idea, I always look it up to see if it's been done before on YouTube. And lo and behold, it's been done about 50,000 times. I can clearly see why creating your own content is just it's just way too much hard work, isn't it? Or I swapped makeup bags with my 14-year-old niece. Just blend it on out, Sister Sue. Oh yeah, thick and creamy. What? I mean, as you can tell, clear as day from my facial expressions, this isn't the kind of content that I watch. Uh, but um, it was her apology video that she posted recently that kind of struck a chord in the system. I want to talk to you guys in this video. It's been so awesome. So positive. So positive. All the things I've ever done. Someone fetch the onions. <laughs> Yep, no eye sweat, not even a bit of slobber, nothing even passes from her eyes. It's just classic manipulation at its finest. So if you don't know the full story or care too much, basically back in 2012, she tweeted this. Tip for all black people, if you pull your pants up, you can run from the police faster. Hashtag you're welcome. Oh dear, that is pretty bad. That is, um... I mean, I've seen worse, but that just that just uh, puts the uh, nail on the coffin, doesn't it? Do you know what? How about me pulling my pants up and running away from your channel faster? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. There's no justification for for this. It's just it's just straight up third degree racism, whatever you might want to label it. I feel so just disappointed. I get back then that people were young and stupid and didn't really think about what they were tweeting. They didn't even think they were gonna blow up into something massive, you know. So. They thought, you know what, a couple of racist tweets won't won't uh, harm anyone at all. Like, I can just imagine a lot of upcoming YouTubers just going back on their Twitter archive, just like, oh, delete this, delete this, because they know someone will use that against them one day. And the internet is such a scary place. Like, you, like you just... It's so scary, the fact that whatever you post, it's out there. And shit, like, it's, fucking, it's, it's scary. And whenever I see a disappointing you, it just break my heart into a million pieces. I'm so sorry for anyone that's been hurt through this. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Waiter, uh, we would like some onions to table two, please. We have a lady over here who is struggling to force out a single tear. 
Um, it's pretty fucking pathetic. I mean, she's hardly a good actress. She, she spent the last hour trying to force out a single tear. The thing is, when someone is crying, you can tell that they are actually crying because their their face is all red, you know, their eyes are puffy and watery, and actual waterworks, like real waterworks coming down their face, like that is legit crying. It's like when you watch a TV show or a film and you see someone in tears, you feel their emotion, and yes, it's, it's still acting, but they do a pretty damn good job of it. For example, Will Smith in the film The Pursuit of Happiness. When at the end of the film, his character finally gets offered a job after being made homeless, and the look on his face, you can feel that emotion. That is a face about to burst into tears. When you look at someone like this, the comparison is not there, because you're not shedding anything. I was so stupid and ignorant and... I have no excuses here today. I'm not here to give you an excuse. I have no excuses. <laughs> At a handful of Tri-State Kroger's, they're putting the process of checking out in the hands of customers. Abby Roseberry does her weekly grocery shopping at the Alexandria Kroger. But before she puts an item into her cart, she uses the store's new handheld scanner. I use it every time I come. Why? Um, it makes it a lot simpler. It's a new checkout system that lets you scan your item as you shop. I can scan things as I go and then it's a quicker checkout. I don't have to wait in the line. Sounds like a, like a dolphin mating for the first time. Like. See, the problem with this apology video is everyone sees right through it. Everyone sees that, okay, you are sorry, you want to put things right, and you regret the tweets. But you're doing it in such a manipulative way, and the audience, some of them, are just coughing this up and thinking you're actually genuinely really crying in this video, when you're not, like, at all. You've had one job in this video, and that is to apologise and you've done such a half ass job of it. Why is it not enough for a YouTuber that has millions of subscribers, a wealthy bank account, people on the payroll for you? I mean, you, you'll never have to work a, a normal job in your life. And yet you're acting as if like, it's the worst thing in the world. Like, oh my God, my life has ended. Like, <laughs> you're still gonna have that big house. You're still gonna have that luxury car sitting outside. None of this really matters to you, as long as your bank account is wealthy. Just stop the problematic Crocodile Tears Act, because it's not working, and everyone sees through that. How's it going? So yesterday I never even got a chance to wrap the video up, but I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who has watched. I just have so much content on the horizon coming up. I've got the ideas, but filming them is is the step up so so please just you know just bear with me stay tuned because there's so much coming and i cannot wait to show you so thank you very much for watching please turn on that subscribe bell so you will be notified whenever i make a video so thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video goodbye